everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Monique and today I'm going to talk to you about my pick line. If you found this video, you probably searched pick line into the YouTube search bar and you're looking for in more information and that's what I am going to tell you about today. <laughs> maybe you are scheduled to have a pick line inserted yourself or maybe a pick line is going to be given to one of your friends or family members or maybe you just heard about it and you want to learn more about it, which is also super cool. So if you're any of those people or any of the people that I did not mention, this video is for you. I do want to quickly say that I am not a medical expert, I'm not a doctor, I'm just someone who gets a lot of pick lines, so I have a lot of first-hand experience. But if you need medical attention or if something is happening with your pick line that you don't understand, please stop this video and call your doctor, or if you're experiencing emergency, please call 911. I'm not a professional, so don't, don't, don't at me. For just a little bit of background before we begin, I have cystic fibrosis, which is a chronic lung condition, and I get pick lines about every three months, three or four months, multiple times a year. I think this pick line is like number 13 or 14 in my lifetime. Um, so I have gotten a lot of pick lines and I know what they're like. I am so used to them by now that it's second nature. It's part of my life. So if I can help someone who's going through maybe their first pick line or maybe even their 60th pick line, if I can help make someone feel more comfortable about the whole process or teach them something new about it, then that's, that's my goal. That's what I want to do with this video. That's what I want to do here. So what exactly is a pick line? A pick line in medical terms is a peripherally inserted central catheter, P-I-C-C. But in human terms, a pick line is basically an IV that can stay in your body for longer than a regular IV could. This right here is my pick line. So the reasons why someone may get a pick line vary from person to person. Uh, usually they're given to someone who may need um, intravenous, is that how you pronounce it? Intravenous? Intravenous? Who may need IV antibiotics for long term. Uh, regular IVs that go in your arm usually don't last that long. A pick line like this, however, can last for months at a time. Pick lines are also given to people who may not need to be in the hospital for an extended period of time. So for example, I will go into the hospital to get a pick line inserted and then I'll go home. And then I go home with the pick line so I can finish my IV treatment at home instead of having to be in the hospital for two, three, four weeks. A pick line may also be given to someone whose veins are weak, who can't really take the regular IVs. They may put a pick line in that way. Um, or they may be given if the medication that you're on is really harsh on your veins and collapses them. This is also something that happens to me frequently. So basically what the pick line actually is, you can see here, is basically just a little tube. And the tube travels up your arm and it travels down and it rests right by your heart. So another difference between a pick line and an IV is that the pick line goes into your chest cavity area and it administers the medication much more quickly because it's going next to your heart and then it's pumping the medicine throughout the rest of your body much faster. So pick lines are also a bit more effective that way. Personally, I think pick lines are super great. <laughs> they allow me to do my medication at home and they make it so they don't have to stick me many times at the hospital because what'll often happen is they'll put an IV in me and because my veins are already so weak and fragile and the medication that I'm on is so harsh, uh, they will often have to stick me quite a few times because the veins keep collapsing or the IVs keep failing. So a pick line is a great alternative because they just, they put it in and then I'm done and I don't have to worry about them sticking me anymore. Um, they can also take blood labs, blood draws through an IV pick. I'm gonna get these confused throughout the whole video. They can take blood through a pick line as well, so you don't have to be stuck even more, and that's great because the less I need to be stuck with needles, the better, honestly. So if you are getting a pick line, I hope this reassures you because pick lines are great, and they're just, they're an awesome little piece of medical technology that it's super cool, and I've, <laughs> over so many pick lines, I've grown to really love them. Probably the most frightening part about getting a pick line is actually getting it inserted. It is not a surgery to get one, but it is a medical procedure, so it's a bit more involved than just getting a regular IV where they just like stick it in and you're done. So the process isn't scary. I know it can seem scary, but it is a very non-invasive process in the grand scheme of things. 
that being said, I know it can be scary to have to get it done and they do kind of like get all dressed up in their surgical gear and they do have to like sterilize everything and that kind of environment can be really anxiety inducing. So before I get into what they actually do and how they put the pick line in, I do want to say that you have options. Me personally, I request Ativan, which is an anti-anxiety medication, before they start the pick line. This helps not only me, but the pick team. It helps me calm down and it helps my body relax. And because my body is relaxed, they can actually put the pick line in easier. So talk to your doctor about different solutions you may have if you are really scared about getting the pick line in, which is understandable. Talk to your doctor, explain to them, and come up with a solution. Now let's get to the insertion part. They may do it right there in the hospital room. They may take you into a procedure room that's separate. It depends on the hospital. But what will happen is they will, the pick team, usually it's like a separate team than the IV team. Um, and usually this is like what they do. The people, every single person who has put my pick line in has been amazing at their job and they know exactly what they're doing and it's great. So you're in good hands. But what they will do is they will sterilize the area, they will get all dressed in their, their scrubs and their gloves and their funky little hats, and they will sterilize you too. So they may have you change into like a separate hospital Johnny, a separate hospital gown, and they will start prepping the area. A pick line usually goes into your upper arm, sometimes it could go into your neck, and sometimes they put them in the legs as well, but the arms is basically where they check first. What they will do is they have an ultrasound machine and they will start, you know, taking their little doohickey and looking for uh, the specific vein that they need to go into. Basically what they do is they will follow one of the specific veins in your arms that goes to that heart area that I was talking about before. So in order to find that, they need to use the ultrasound machine. So they're just going to like look around. It's kind of cold because they have that ultrasound goop on it, but this is really a super chill part of the process and basically they're going to find that vein and once they do the rest of the procedure will begin. Every pick team is different but I have found over the different hospitals I've gone to that they follow basically the same formula. First what they do is they will sterilize the area and they will put you under a sheet. This is kind of big for me because this is what actually gives me the most anxiety out of the whole procedure is they will, to make sure everything is sterile, they'll kind of like put you underneath this, this medical sheet so that, you know, you're not breathing onto the, you know, procedure area. That's why I ask for Ativan or something to help my anxiety because as soon as that sheet goes over my face, my entire body will like tense up and because I'm doing that, it'll make the procedure much harder. But anyway, that's kind of a tangent. And then once they are ready, they will actually give you some Novocaine or Lidocaine, it depends. And this is... Honestly, this is the most intense part of the procedure. I'm not going to lie and say that it doesn't hurt. It does hurt a little bit. Um, a lot of people say it's like a bee sting. Uh, to me, it just feels like someone's poking you with a needle. So it's not bad, I will say, of all the things that I have had done to me. This is one of the more low-key things, but it's not totally painless. So I do want to be upfront about that. But what they're going to do is they're going to give you that lidocaine or novocaine shot, and that is just to numb the whole area because the next step is they are going to make a very small incision into your arm. This incision is where they're going to feed the pick line through. Now, I will say I have never felt them make the incision ever, 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 ever. Once they give me that lidocaine, everything else is, I don't feel anything until the whole thing is done. Um, this is just basically a time for you to chill out and wait. <laughs> um, something that I like to do is I like to play either music or a podcast to help me get like my mind off of what they're doing. Um, because it kind of freaks me out when they're like, you know, poking around in my arm and stuff. Um, but I honestly truly don't feel a single thing after they give me that, that Novocaine shot. So then what they're going to do after they make the incision is they're going to feed this little, you can kind of see it, this little guy, that little line, they're going to feed it through the incision and through that vein and make sure that it goes into your, the correct place. They do have another ultrasound and I think like a magnetic machine that tells them like where they are. This part is kind of lost on me, one, because I can't really see it while they're doing it, and two, because it's much more medical than I'm, like, accustomed to. There's, like, a whole bunch of, like, they're talking about medical terms, and anyway. But what they're doing is they're making sure that it's going into the right place. 
Um, and this takes basically no time at all. Really, the whole process goes really, really fast, especially after they give you the shot. Once they, they feed it through, they make sure that it's, you know, where they assume is the right place, um, they will fix you up. They will put this little dressing on it to make sure it doesn't go anywhere, and then it's done. You're done. You're set. You got a pick line in. Congratulations! The only other step after this is usually they will do an x-ray just to make sure that it is in your heart. Because something that can happen is it can go through the arm and then it can get kind of lost along the way. Um, I have had pick lines that'll end up like in my neck or somewhere just random and sometimes that just happens. This is not a big deal. If it ends up in the wrong place, do not worry. They won't have to redo the whole thing. Usually what they'll do is they may give you a bit more Novocaine just to make sure nothing hurts. And then they will just kind of feed a new line through the existing line, make sure that line goes to the right place, and then pull out the other line. Not a big deal. Just more annoying than anything else. And then after that, you are done. The whole pick line process is complete. You may stay in the hospital for a little bit longer so the doctor can monitor you, make sure all your medications are good and that the pick line site is kosher. But then they may also send you home. This is what I prefer. I like to finish up my medications at home because I heal better at home. <laughs> and um, I usually am on medications for another two or three weeks after my hospital stay. So I'm very appreciative and grateful that I can finish that course at home and not stuck in the hospital all day long. If they do send you home, they will send you home with a nursing team, which I've always had great, great luck with. I've actually become really good friends with some of my um, nurses that come and visit me in my home. But they will send you home and then a nurse will help you, especially if it's your first pick line, a nursing team will come and help you learn how to do it on your own because that's a big thing. You have to be able to infuse the medication by yourself or you need to have someone who will do it for you. My very first pick line I got when I was 12 and my mom took care of everything. So the nurse taught my mom how to infuse for me. And then the next time I was like, mom, I gotta be able to do this by myself. So I talked to the nurse directly and I learned how to do it. And taking care of your pick line and giving yourself medication is really super easy. It's a very easy process. You just have to make sure that you're doing it the right way with the right steps and you're always doing it in a clean environment to prevent uh, infection. Another thing to ask for, a nurse will know exactly what these are. When they give you the pick line in the hospital, um, they just give you these, this part right here and this whole part isn't included. This is called an extender and this makes it so you can easily, you know, do everything yourself because you can't really, I can't really, like, do stuff right there. If you're going to be doing it yourself, please ask your nurse for extenders and she will gladly give them to you. So now I'm going to do a little bit of a demo to show you how I infuse my medications. Um, like I said, it's super easy. I just want to show you guys the process so you can kind of be reassured that it's not, it's not hard. It's super, super easy. All right, so I've got all my supplies here. Ooh. I hope that crinkling isn't too loud on camera. I have just washed my hands and made sure that I'm all nice and clean. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to infuse my medication. I'm going to start by giving you guys an acronym that has always helped me, and it is SASH, S-A-S-H, and that stands for Saline Antibiotic Saline Heparin. That is always the order that you're going to infuse antibiotics. You're going to start by taking a little alcohol swab and making sure that you just swab the end of that little cap really nice and well just to disinfect it. This will stop the spread of infection. You really do not want an infection in your pick line. That is super not fun. Uh, so you're just going to make sure that it's nice and clean. Next, you're going to take saline. This is just straight saline. And then you're going to take the cap off. All the ones that I've ever had, you need to pull down first and then push up just to release a little bit of air bubble. And then you're just going to screw that on. And then just push it. Oh, I forgot something. <laughs> Uh, most pick lines have like a little lock right here, so you make sure that, that is uncapped before you start, which I didn't do. And now you're just going to push that right on through. What this does is it flushes out the pick line. Um, sometimes things might get stuck in there, like a little bit of a blood, tiny, tiny blood clot or just some kind of tissue. So what the saline does is it pushes everything through so that the antibiotic can go through as well. 
So keep that on there to make sure it stays disinfected. If at any time your hands or any kind of outside thing touches either the tip of what you're using or the tip of the pick line, that's okay. Just make sure that you, again, take your alcohol swab and just disinfect it before you proceed again. Next, you're going to take your antibiotic. So I do want to talk about this guy for just a minute. Um, these I affectionately call the pods. I'm sure there is a medical name for it, I just don't know it. But this is my entire antibiotic. So yours may look different from this. You may have the traditional like IV drip with a bag or maybe a big syringe. Those are all fine, unfortunately. These are the only guys that I have right now, so I can't show you those. But the process is going to be basically the same thing. So the cool thing about these guys, I would ask your nurse or your doctor about them. Um, if you say the pods, they should understand what that means or just show them this video. Um, basically, this just dispenses the medication automatically and they're great. With an IV drip bag, you do have to keep an eye on it and make sure that it's infusing at a correct rate. Uh, but this guy does all the work for you and you just plug it in and you're done, which I'm going to show you right now. So I've got my pick line with the saline still attached. A tangled mess! Ah, too many cords. And I have the tip of my antibiotic here, so I'm just going to unscrew this. Make sure again, be careful, try not to touch this. If you do touch it, just swab it again. I'm gonna throw that away. And then, this does take some finagling, so if you're not... If it's a little awkward for your hands, don't worry, it becomes easier. So you're just gonna unscrew the saline and then screw in the antibiotic. And then... With this guy, there's another little clasp, so you just unhook that, and then the antibiotic is infusing. That's all you have to do. This guy is going to infuse over time, so all you have to do is just keep an eye on it, and when, you'll see, it'll deflate. And once it's deflated, then you know that the antibiotic is done, and you can move on. So, once your antibiotic is done, you're going to take another saline and do the same thing. You gotta unscrew the antibiotic, screw on the saline, and then just flush it again. This is just to make sure that every single drop of the antibiotic has gone into your system and that nothing is floating around in there. Now this next guy is heparin. Uh, this is actually a blood thinner and what this does is it stays in the line just to make sure that no blood clots happen. Blood clots are pretty common with pick lines and they can be super annoying. So. Make sure to use the heparin after the saline just to pr try to prevent that. I'm gonna screw it on my pick line. Uh, uh. Ah, see? I did the thing. So, sometimes your hands may be shaky and you kind of like miss it and they kind of just like... If it doesn't go on perfectly, I like to just kind of be more safe than sorry. So I will just take more alcohol and scrub the pick part, and then I'll also scrub the syringe too, just to make sure. I'm really, really paranoid about infection, so I really try to be just as, as clean and safe as possible. And then I'm just going to bloop, and then bloop. And that's it. And then I'm just going to close this back up again, tie it back around my arm. I've got my fancy little doohickey here to keep everything in place. And I'm done. And I don't have to do anything for another eight hours when I have to infuse more medication. And that was it. It was super easy, right? Eh. Again, like I mentioned before, I am not a medical professional. I'm not a doctor. If something happens with your pick line, say it starts to bleed, or you can't push anything through it, you will have your nurse's number. They will give that to you when they set you up. Um, or you always have your doctor's number, or you can always call 911 if you can't get a hold of anyone. If something like that happens, try not to panic. Pick lines can be fickle. Uh, they can bleed at the insertion site. That is not uncommon. Um, they can get inflamed and they can get swollen. None of that is an issue, but if that does happen, you need to call your doctor or your nursing team and let someone know so they can come and fix it. Another thing you do want to be mindful of is uh, try not to get this area wet, try not to get it dirty. Showering with the pick line is always a really fun process. Uh, basically what I do is I cover it with these like cellophane sticky things and then I cover it with like a trash bag and I cover it with a towel and then I try to take a shower. 
you'll find a way that works best for you, but try to keep this area clean. Try not to wear like really tight clothing or scratchy clothing that'll irritate the site. A nurse will come out and change the dressing, which is the covering part. They will come out and change that probably about once a week or so. And yeah, just do your best to keep it, keep it nice, make sure you can breathe. And that's, that's about it as far as the care and keeping of your pick line goes. Well guys, that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. And I really hope I could reassure some of you that pick lines aren't scary. They're awesome. <laughs> I know I said it a lot in this video, but I love them. And I'm so happy that we have the opportunity to, you know, take care of things ourselves. And for someone who's chronically ill, being independent is a huge thing for me. And having a pick line allows me to be independent. So if you are getting a pick line soon, please be reassured that pick lines are great. They allow you to be independent. They allow you to take care of yourself. Uh, or if you can't take care of yourself, they allow someone to help you with that. And that's great. So I hope you are all doing well. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would like to see more videos about chronic illness or about dealing with hospital stuff, please let me know. Um, I may turn this into a series. And yeah, I, that's, that, that's, that's it, that's it, that's all I have to say. Anyway, that's all from me. Have a great day and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.